Welcome to FactSpark. Usually, when people are speaking about North America, this and this is what comes to mind. Geographically speaking, however, tropical beaches and rainforests are just as much a part of North America as the neighbors to the north. The Central American region is part of North America and spans from the southern border of Mexico until the Northern American subcontinent turns into South America at the Panamanian-Colombian border. My original idea of this video was to highlight and explain the unique features and facets which make up these seven nations. As I was researching the demography, the landscapes and unique features, the history and the current situation in these countries, however, I came to realize that there are way more similarities than differences to be found. Going through all the typical parameters that you assess a country situation by, like the development and economic factors, flora and fauna, and striking occurrences in their history, it feels more like one large country which simply hasn't found its way together yet. Looking at the diversity of all of these metrics, it could even be argued that these countries in a way are more homogenous and more meant to be together than for example the United States or other large countries. Briefly looking at the history of the Central American region actually shows a time where most of today's Central American nations were a unified independent state. During the occupation of the Spanish Empire from the 16th century, the Captaincy General of Guatemala was an administrative division of the empire encompassing five of the seven states of today's Central America. In 1821, these nations succeeded from the empire to form the Federal Republic of Central America, which has been in place as a democratic republic until 1841. The republic did have its struggles, with liberals and conservatives both striving for power and rebelling in a civil war as soon as the other group was in power, and it ended up with the constituting nations disintegrating one by one in the years leading up to 1841. While the Federal Republic of Central America didn't include today's territories of Belize and Panama, both countries share the fate that they used to be part of the Spanish Empire, except that Belize was occupied by Britain and Panama by Colombia after the reign of the Spanish. Looking at the geography of the seven nations, Extensive parallels can be drawn between all of them. Every one of the countries has beautiful coastline, either towards the Caribbean Sea, the Pacific Ocean, or both. Dreamy beaches like this one could be found in Belize, Costa Rica, or Honduras, and if you were to be dropped at a random beach in any of the Central American states, you wouldn't know where you are unless you asked a passerby. A similar story applies to the heartland of all of these countries. Most of Central America rests on top of the Caribbean plate, which is converging towards the Cocos, Nazca and the North American plate, forming volcanic highlands all along the Isthmus, which are covered by tropical rainforest. The Cordilla de Talamanca stretches from the Panama Canal all the way to the Lago Cochibolca in Nicaragua and marks the first mountain stretch of Central America. Just north of the largest lake of Central America, however, the volcanic mountain ranges pick back up and cover almost the entire area up until the US border. Every one of the Central American countries houses dormant and active stratovolcanoes, covered in tropical rainforest, with fertile soil allowing for the cultivation of, for example, coffee, cocoa beans, bananas, and sugarcane. The climates are typically considered tropical in the lowlands and get more temperate as the altitude increases, which is a shared pattern between all of these countries. There are heavy rainy seasons between April and December, and the distinct dry season for the rest of the year. Another aspect where Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica and Panama are incredibly similar is the biodiversity. While all of these countries boast a large number of endemic species, meaning species which can only be found in that specific region of the world, the whole region is part of the Mesoamerican Biological Corridor. Around 10% of all species in the world can be found in the rainforests of Central America. And the same can be said for the waters on each side of the land bridge. The Mesoamerican barrier reef system covers over 1,000 kilometers of coastline in front of Belize, Guatemala and Honduras. And countries like Costa Rica and Nicaragua are also known for their coral reefs on both shorelines. When examining the area for its political landscape, a lot of the same issues, but at the same time, a lot of the same prospects and initiatives can be observed. There are several international institutions in place which intend to strive for a more interconnected Central America 
similar to how the European Union and its organs strive to bring the European continent closer together. The first of such organizations was the Central American Court of Justice in 1907, which failed shortly afterwards due to criticism about the independence of the judges from their respective governments. The second attempt was the Organization of Central American States in 1951, which is deemed a lot more successful and spawned several other sub-organizations which foster regional cooperation and unity. Today, the CA4 agreement allows for free movement between four of the Central American countries, similar to the effect of the Schengen Zone in Europe, and SICA, or the Central American Integration System, has become the governing body of the region, incorporating the Central America Bank, a new Central American Court of Justice, the Central American Parliament, and the Central American Armed Forces Conference, which are all working towards a peaceful and united Central America. The organizations have helped the Central American nations to overcome their civil wars of the late 20th century, and significant improvement in the quality of life and the development of the economies can be drawn back to them. While corruption and gang violence are still far from being removed from everyday life, and the region is consistently being shook by hurricanes, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, the trend line in recent decades is clear. Parameters such as the HDI development and the GDP per capita over the last 40 years give a clear sign of hope for all Central American countries. Thanks for watching, subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed it, cheers.